In this presentation, we will review the product feature opcdatabase.net, one of 12 product features of the full opcsystems.net suite. We will see how to log data from local systems and from remote systems even across the internet. We'll see how data buffering is enabled so temporary network connection loss does not affect the data logging and no data is lost. We'll see that you can change properties during runtime and also programmatically from your own Visual Studio application. We'll see how OPC items can change properties like database name, table name, CSV file path, and other features of the opcdatabase.net product. You can log data as fast as 10 milliseconds continuously. With event-driven logging, we can maintain up to 100 nanosecond resolution. You can also log data at a specific time of day. This is great for daily production reports. We can log multiple tags per field and log each tag in multiple groups. We'll also see how to use Direct OPC to log data directly from an OPC server without creating an OPC systems.net tag. You can also have as a data source data from a Visual Studio application so your own custom data can be logged with the OPC database.net product. Each licensed service can log from unlimited numbers of remote systems. You can use opctrend.net to replay data from data logged with opcdatabase.net. You can also use opcreport.net to generate reports from data that is logged. The data format that opcdatabase.net generates is open and easy to query, so you can use any standard report product that can query a database. All features of opcsystems.net implement .NET remoting, and this eliminates the need for DCOM across the network. So this way we can have data anywhere in the world and log data from it even across the internet. Let's see how simple it is to use the opcdatabase.net product. After you install opcsystems.net, the first place to start is using the configure application found under the program group opcsystems.net. This is a way to manually configure the opcdatabase.net features. You can also programmatically set up data logging groups as demonstrated in the vb.net example that also installs with opcsystems.net. We first need to determine what is the data source that we're going to log from. We can select configure tags and log from a set of opcsystems.net tags from the real-time database. The setup of tags is demonstrated in the data sources training video, so if you haven't seen that one yet, you might want to review that. I'll show you quite simply that an opcsystems.net tag can be defined with a data source of a fixed value, which would then come from a Visual Studio application, an OPC item coming from an OPC server, it could also be coming from an OPC client with the product feature opcclient.net, it can be coming from a remote tag, or even a calculation which would be a composite of multiple values together in some kind of math equation. And also you can have as a data source the CPU clock. Once you have defined your data source, then you can select configure data logging. We can select the local service or a remote service to configure even across the internet. Let's enter a logging group name of test. Under the Common tab, we'll activate the logging. Notice that you can have an opcsystems.net tag enable or disable logging. This is a great way to have an OPC item from a PLC activate the logging. Under the logging types, we can specify continuous logging, event-driven logging, logging at a specific time of day, and the data change logging type. Let's leave the default at continuous logging with a logging rate of one second. With continuous logging, you can go down as fast as 10 microseconds. That is the fastest rate that the SQL Server engine or other database engines can digest the data that is fed to it. Also under the Common tab, we can automatically delete data that's older than a specific amount of time. And for PLC queued data, we can enable confirmation and error feedback to tell the PLC or data source that the data has been successfully logged or if there was an error to retry. This is commonly used with the event driven logging type. Under the tags tab is where we define the data sources that we want to log for this logging group. 
Notice that we can include milliseconds, microseconds, and nanoseconds as field names so that we can maintain that 100 nanosecond resolution if needed. Let's select the Add Field button and select the service that we want to log data from. Note that we can select a direct OPC connection to connect directly to an OPC server without having to create opcsystems.net tag. Let's go down to the demo tag configuration of the OPC system service and select the ramp signal and then value. So the tag that we're going to log is ramp.value. When we click OK, a second dialog appears which allows us to specify our field name. We can change the field name to ramp. We can change the data type that is logged to the database engine of anything we would like. When we select OK, we see that field name and tag in the field list. If you right click on the field list, you notice you can do a CSV export to export the field names and tags to a CSV file and then use Microsoft Excel to set up multiple fields and then perform a CSV import. There's also a global CSV export and import to export all data logging configuration parameters and each individual field list in its own separate file. Let's add another tag to the data logging configuration. We'll again select the local service and we'll select sign value. We'll change the field name to sign and click OK. And add a third field from random. Change the field name to random and click OK. We're now ready to specify where do we want to log the data to. Let's take a look at the example of logging to a SQL Server database. We enable the log to database property, change the provider to SQL Server. Notice we can also log to Microsoft Access, Oracle, and MySQL. For the server name property, we can obtain that from the SQL Server Management Studio of the database engine that we want to log to. We can log to a remote system as well. Let's start the SQL Server Management Studio and when the connect dialog first appears we have the server name selected there. You can also use the pull down to browse for other remote server names. We'll copy that and then paste that into the server field. Under the database name, you can enter any name you would like. I would suggest not to use any spaces or special characters. Let's call this one OPC test. And in the table name, we'll simply enter test. Note that all properties of the data logging group can be changed during runtime programmatically from your own Visual Studio application. Also, we can see how we can enable an OPC systems.net tag to automatically change a table, database, or server name. We are going to use Windows authentication, that is the default, but you can also use SQL Server login authentication as well. We are now ready to add that login group to the OPC system service by clicking the Add Logging Group button in the bottom left. We are now logging that data at a one second interval. Let's now bring up Microsoft SQL Server Express. SQL Server Express is the free to use version from Microsoft that you can download from Microsoft.com. Double click on the Databases tab and there we see a new database which is OPC test. The OPC system service automatically created that database for us. If we double click on that database, double click on tables, there we have the table that was automatically created with the field definitions that we had defined. Now if we right click on test and select script table as select to new query editor window. 
We then see a select statement. And you can see this is a simple query statement as our database format is open. And there we have the data. Now let's see how we would log to a CSV file. Let's go back to configure data logging and under the CSV logging tab we will enable log to CSV property. So I can now specify the path as g colon backslash data backslash which is the directory that I want to log my C files to. Let's enter a file name of test and here we can optionally append on to the year, month, day or the default is to append on year, month and day so that each day a new file is automatically created. We can also append on an hour and a minute onto each file name. When we now select apply changes we are now adding to that login group the ability to log to CSV files. If we now go to that directory we see a file now with the base name of test with year, month, and day appended to the end of the file name. Excel recognizes a CSV file as a file that it can open so all we have to do is double click on it for Excel to open that file. And there we see the data being logged into that file. And there we see we have the date and time and the values that are be currently being logged. When Microsoft Excel has a file open, it locks the file and it doesn't share by default the ability for other applications to read or write to it. So right now, with the file open, the OPC system service is buffering the data. If we close the file and don't save any changes, then the OPC system service will update the file with the new values that it has been buffering. So now when we double click on the file again, we see that we have lost no data. That is the buffering feature of opcsystems.net, that if a database engine or a CSV file or even the, on the data source, if it's temporarily lost, that all data will be provided when the connection is reestablished. By default, the data buffering feature is using RAM. We can also enable the feature under Configure Options to buffer data to disk. If we select Configure Options and select the local service, there is a feature called Store Data Logging Buffer to Disk on Network Loss or Database Engine Failure. So both on the data source and the system that is doing the data logging, that may be the same system if, you, if you're logging from local tags, you would want to enable this feature for long-term data buffering. This way you're only limited by hard disk space size when the data buffering is occurring. You can specify a drive and directory of where the temporary files will be stored when the data buffering is occurred. Let's see how we would use the opctrend.net product to replay data from the database. Remember that the data logged is in an open format so you can use any third-party software that can make a database query. Let's use the OPC Systems HMI container that was demonstrated in the training video of opctrend.net. Here we see the real-time data from the local OPC system service. To make a history call from a trend window, select the history button on the toolbar, specify your start and end time frame. Remember that the OPC database.net table format is open so you can use really any third-party database product that can make a generic query. We select OK. The OPC system service will then go to the database, query the data from the data, and return it back to the trend for us. We can then analyze the data using the data grid and see the raw values from the database.